Hi, this is JC with Beyond 20, and we are going to continue our series looking at some differences between ShareWell and ServiceNow. Today, we're going to take a look at how ShareWell and ServiceNow takes the emails that it receives and then does something with it, like create a record. Uh, in the example today, we'll be taking a look at how both create an incident. So starting on the ShareWell side, uh, if we navigate over to our email and event monitoring, We'll go into Email and Event Monitoring Manager. Uh, assuming you've set this up, we'll choose the one that you've set up. In this example, I'm just going to use the demo, moder demo monitoring one. It comes out of the box. Um, and then if we look at the monitors, um, we can see there's some additional settings here of kind of what to look for, et cetera. But the monitors are really going to determine kind of what happens. And so in this demo monitor, there are certain items that you can skip. So if there's um, things in the subject line, for instance, um, you could skip if it's an automatic reply or something like that. Um, you could have it just skip that item or any other things that you may want. Then by default uh, in this out of the box one, they have this reopen incident, change approved, change denied, change abstained, update an existing incident, and the default. And what the default is, um, like I mentioned, we're going to be talking about uh, creating an incident. And so that's what this default one does. And so by default, uh, you've already ran through all your steps. Um, and so uh, that is something I do want to bring up here is it does go top to bottom on what it runs. So it, the first thing it's going to look for is skip certain items. Um, the next thing it's going to look for is the reopen incident. You are able to reorder these as well. It's just the skip certain items. Uh, must remain at the top, and the default one must remain at the bottom. You cannot edit those ones. But these other ones, if you wanted to have it update or look for an update existing incident, you can do that above the other ones. Once it hits one of these monitors, it will not process the rest. So you do want to make sure that you have that order correct. So looking at the default, we'll take a look at the actions and what it's going to do. It's going to attach the email to the incident, uh, and we have these items as well here. And then it's going to create a new incident. If we go to edit here, we can see exactly what's going to happen. Uh, it's going to automatically link it to the customer as well as open the new record. And then we're going to take a look at what fields it does. Um, so we just want to see only the fields that it's going to set. It's going to set the call source to email. Uh, the category to report an outage or error. Set our description here. A priority, our service, and our subcategory. So uh, it's pretty basic, uh, but this is how that uh, ShareWell takes a look at emails, uh, decides kind of what to do with it. If it can't find anything, it will hit this default. And like I said, this default then is just going to create an incident. Um, so if you are trying to do something specific and it's just creating an incident, it's not doing what you want it to do, then you probably have something wrong in your monitor. Now let's take a look at ServiceNow. It does things a little bit different, but it's fairly similar here. So what we're going to do is we're going to search for inbound actions. And then here we can see all of the inbound actions. This is just the default list view. Um, so we can see these are active. Um, once again, I'm going to look for the create incident one here. And there are some additional things you can do on the ServiceNow side that you can't really do on ShareWell right now. So one of the things that they have is the stop processing checkbox. So with ShareWell, as soon as it hit the first uh, monitor uh, listener, then it would uh, stop and not do any of the rest. In ServiceNow, you have the option to continue running and look at the rest of them. And by default, this out of the box one will do that. And so we can see we're going to do a record action, which means we're going to do something on a record within ServiceNow. Our type is new. You do have to have um, separate inbound actions for different types. So if it's the email comes in as a reply or forward, those have to be separate. Our execution order is very similar to what we saw in ShareWell with that order. Um, ShareWell just doesn't have the numbers for an order. They have, you can just see it uh, visually. In ServiceNow, you can see, uh, choose the number you want it to do. In addition, you can add some conditions here. 
Um, so if you are, for instance, if you're forwarding multiple email addresses to the, your ServiceNow email addresses, which would be best practice, um, and you want uh, one email address to create an, an incident for a specific team, and if it's coming to another email address, it would go to a, a different team altogether. You could then go into your choose field and do the to field. And then it contains, and then whatever that email address is. So that way, um, if a user sends to that email address, that email address has the forward onto it to send to ServiceNow. It still retains the to field within it, and then it'll properly execute the action that you're asking it to do. So if we take a look at actions here, this is what it's go what's going to happen. Um, very similar to farewell, you can basically choose your field. Um, like I want to be description um, from email to be the body. So this will tell you this will tell you um, what goes in the field on the incident. Um, I also want um, let's see here my short description maybe will be the subject line. Um, those kind of items. In addition, if you would like to script them, uh, and this is an out-of-the-box one here, so it already does have some scripting. Um, so you can see that the caller ID gets the user ID, um, things like that. So this is already done in the scripts. Um, in general, ServiceNow is recommended that if you use scripts, do not use the field actions as it could cause collisions. Um, so you can either do either one, basically. In general, using the field actions, if you're not a, a strong coder, it's pretty easy to do. Um, even if you're not a strong coder, the scripts are also pretty easy to do, as you can see. Um, these are pretty simple here. The current category equals inquiry. This is just the category for that incident. We do want to make sure that it is active, as we can see here. And we are determining the table on this is the incident table. And then finally, this is just uh, the description. It's for um, administrators so that when they come and look at these, they know what it actually does. So that is a basic overview of um, how ShareOne and ServiceNow handle emails once they get into the system and kind of how they decide what to do. Thank you and follow us for more information.